tell you what, let's actually do the medium sized map Hail Unicorns because it is very, very much a sorceress type of playthrough. We need to do a sorceress map. Hail Unicorns does seem to be the exact right playthrough. So that is going to be what we do. Oh, does Here's My Magic 2 not have a random map generator? No, it does not. Uh, so we, we can't just randomize it. It's actually been the topic of discussion on the F Heroes 2 Discord recently. If somebody else wants to talk about that, I'll let them, but there's a lot of technical challenges that come down to that. Folks, we are going to play, as I update my stream stuff, Hail Unicorns, the medium-sized map that is made for the sorceresses and made to be a really, really good time. So it looks like it's gonna be three players here. It looks like it's going to be uh, an opportunity for us to showcase the strengths and hopefully not the weaknesses of the sorceresses, but as a normal difficulty map, it reads as such. The Twisted Maze of Sorceress Towns has three factions struggling for soul control. Use your resources wisely. That's going to be the plan. So with that being said, I don't really mind if we go in the blue, yellow, or purple position. We are going to let the dice roll decide. One, two, three, four, five, six. The dice roll is going to be a one. That means we're going to stay here in the blue position. On impossible difficulty, folks, let's dive right in. We start off with Rebecca the Sorceress, level one hero, zero attack, zero defense, two spell power, three knowledge. And she's got, it looks like three dwarves and 19 of the sprites. Uh, do we have a mage guild? No, we do not. We simply have the bless spell that every good sorceress ought to start off with. We do have a pack of unicorns guarding the town of Middlegate. There is a unicorn a paddock pasture right here waiting for us. If only we can get here and this town may not be upgraded to a castle. Very interesting. These unicorns are going to build up over time and eventually we're going to rescue them. But for now, they're just going to have to stay put for us. We do have a cure, a shield and a stone skin in this mage guild way far away. If ever we can get to that, it looks like it's at least two to three weeks journey away. It's pretty far away. And so let's turn our attention instead to the castle of Winningham. This is going to be uh, looking to have the tree house, which is actually kind of a big deal. So the tree house is probably, I think it is, it's the only first level dwelling that costs more than gold. The tree house actually costs five wood. If you play the sorceresses on impossible difficulty and you don't start off with the tree house, you are in trouble because you are obligated to find at least one stack of wood just to get your first level creatures onto the board. And so it's it's really nice to make sure that we at least have that tree house. Otherwise, it's going to be lots and lots of wood in order to pick up things like the fenced meadow and the cottage. You're going to need the tavern in order to also get the cottage um, wood or a little bit of mercury gems and an awful lot of, of mercury. That's going to be our goal in the next little bit. For now, though, I think that it's actually best to leave these dwarves behind. I don't really anticipate that Rebecca is going to do much fighting. We are in beach area, so we're going to have a terrain penalty anywhere we go. I do see this tree house here. I do see a, a windmill until we can get a second hero to go south. I think that this is the direction that we go. Hello. Do you see that, folks? That looks to be the very tippity top of a stone lith. Maybe, just maybe, there's more to this map than meets the eye. For now, let's go to this treehouse here. A group of sprites with a desire for greater glory wish to join you. Do you accept? I sure do. And it looks like sorceresses on this map is going to be good. With our navigation secondary skill that we start off with, if we can get into the water, we probably should. Very, very nice to know that we don't need to continue to travel in this direction. We can either go north or we can go south. I think I'm going to go towards this windmill for now. One direction seems just as good as any other. And so let's pick up this windmill for two Mercury. The keeper of the mill announces, my lord, I have been working very hard to provide you with these resources. Come back next week or more. We do see Astra. Astra, the yellow sorceress. She is not too far away. She must have her own fountain. Do we have enemies directly here? Tough to say, I cannot say. But this lith does look different than this lith over here. So hopefully there's no major problems. Better pick up the well while we can. We don't have a lot of wood. We don't have a lot of resources. And so uh, what to do, where to go, I can't possibly say. Uh, we come upon some unicorns guarding our ore mine. 
And then there is a lith here. Is this undefended? It is undefended. Does that mean that we are about to be attacked by some enemies? I don't remember. This is a map I've actually... I don't know if I've ever played this map. And so I don't know how scary these enemies are. I don't know how much I have to worry about being attacked sooner or later. But if it's a three player map, maybe I have my lith, they have theirs, and then maybe a third sorceress has the third type of lith. I'm gonna operate under that assumption for now. That's just gonna be my, my plan moving forward. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Dranik says, uh, playing sorceress with bar here, barbarian hero is so fun. You are totally right. The ranged damage, the high speed complemented with the high damage is so good. And one of the best things about the sorceresses that you don't really see in the first and second level creatures, a little bit with the dwarves, is that the bless spell is absolutely the best on the sorceresses because the unicorns do between seven to 14 damage. The greater druids, they'll do between five and eight. The elves do so much damage. The bless spell, if you're doing max damage and bonus damage with these sorceress units, they're pretty flimsy. They don't take a hit very well, but they can end fights before they even start. And so a barbarian can really play to those strengths if you give them the opportunity. Rather than try and purchase something else, we're going to purchase a couple of these troops. And folks, let's go through these lists. Yeah, I'm not finding unicorns. It's not happening. <laughs> No, 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 not happening at all. Bammy says, this is one of the few maps I actually remember from back in the day. If I'm about to do something really dumb, please let me know. I would very much appreciate any help on this map that we can possibly get as we are teleported into this snowy area over here. And we hear the beautiful, beautiful snow theme. One of my favorite themes in all of Heroes of Might and Magic. Mm, so very, very good. And then, Avatar saying, oh, it was Gates of Hell 2 I was thinking of, a challenge map hidden in the multiplayer menu, XL. I would love to see you break that map someday. Hopefully not the other way around. Not if, but when I get broken by a map on stream, you all will know it. I have so far avoided being absolutely obliterated on stream, uh, but every single loss I've ever had, it does make it to video. Well, folks, oh no. <laughs> um, you were saying. <laughs> oh goodness, folks, this is not good. <laughs> um, I think that the bless on the sprites is actually the best thing here. This is a loss. This is immediately game over. I did not think that we would find unicorns in such big numbers. <laughs> And, and here's the thing. I love the chat right now. You guys are awesome. Oh no, bless will not help. Run! Uh, scared face, scared face, scared face. This is so bad. But if I run, I just lose the troops anyway. Um, I can't surrender to unicorns. They don't want my gold. They don't want my money. And so by running, I just simply lose. <laughs> and even if I do rehire Rebecca, she's gonna start off with these units and we lose the elves. Um. <laughs> nice. Very, very nice. Well. Hmm. I feel sheepish. Vami says, if I remember correctly, you won't get immediately jumped through the list. Then again, you never know with the F-Heroes 2 AI. That's very, very true. Folks, uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm gonna take a mulligan. We're gonna we're gonna count this scenario as a loss. I'm gonna play everything the exact same way. Um <sighs> Should I, should I, should I struggle here actually? You know what? Tell you what, there's a part of me that wants to restart and there's a part of me that says, look man, this is your opportunity. The greater the struggle, the more glorious the triumph. I'm not saying I'm gonna win this scenario. I think that that was a pretty major loss, but you know what? I've had worse. First, uh, I've had worse things happen to me as a player. I am not going to go down without a fight. That was a mistake. That was very sad. I'm very sorry for everything that just happened. I'm very sad for this. Oh my gosh, run. But, but I think that we're gonna, we're gonna soldier on through this map and we're gonna hope for the very best. I am gonna have Rebecca stay here so that nobody follows me through the lifts. And we're gonna see if the enemies are gonna follow me up. We're gonna, we're gonna wait and see. This boat, let's see if we can find some advantages on the high seas. We have taken a bit of a penalty, but if we can get some wood, we can actually get dwarves and things like that. So let's, let's not lose our heads. 
Tranquila. Tranquila. Calm. Cool. Breathe in. Breathe out. It's going to be fine. And that's going to take us to day two of month one, week two. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Dranic says, I expect the AI to eat you jumping out of stone lifts. I think that they will. And, and my hope is, is that they have not yet, as we do see the Shrine of the Third Circle, which is actually kind of a big deal. That could be a big positive for me. As we pick up five wood, thankfully. Um, the AI does an excellent job of recognizing weakness and then uh, pushing their advantage. I really think that that's one of my favorite things about the F Heroes 2 AI is that it, it does a very good job of threat assessment. The problem is, is that when it prioritizes uh, threats and ignores everything else around that threat and they just uh, charge blindly into their doom, I think that we've all seen that uh, where the AI tries to, to strike a blow against you and they end up hurting themselves more because they run right past your big, scary, tough hero trying to get the hero with one single sprite. And when that happens, they're having a real bad time. We still need a little bit more wood. I was hoping I could find some more flotsam. Let's see if this whirlpool is actually gonna get me anywhere special. Rather than landing, let's try and pick up all the freebies out here. There's the wood I need. Let's use that to pick up the cottage. And I'm anticipating that the AI has probably gotten all the way up to at least, at least Grand Elves at this point. Probably at least, well, probably things like the Druids. Whether they've got unicorns or not, I don't know. But that is something that I think is probably very highly concerning. Uh, we do see purple for the first time. It looks like they have scouted this area. That cannot be allowed to stand. It's time to take Natasha. No. It's time to take uh, Sabu the Barbarian. We've already got a couple of sorceresses out there. Sabu the Barbarian is how we're going to win this scenario. A Barbarian with some damage is going to be very useful. And the first thing that I thought of when I saw him um, was actually realizing that hold on he's got the pathfinding here he can cross the beat he can cross the beach and he might be able to get me onto that lift to keep the enemies out after we attack sir gallant we may have just enough movement points to get to this stone lift let's find out glorious victory the enemy doesn't run and we don't take any losses i'm going to accept that i'm going to accept that now here's the question this is going to take us to here I'm going to hit spacebar one time. I know exactly where this is going to take me. It's going to take me right here. And we're just going to stay put for one moment. Maybe tomorrow we head out and we actually try and take an enemy castle. Maybe they're, maybe they've all been fighting. Uh, maybe that's going to give us an opportunity to move forward. There's a jail here. If there are troops here, we might have saved this whole scenario for ourselves. Despite not having a lot of forces, we might be moving in the right direction. Who knows? We still do need the ore. Remember that the unicorns are guarding this ore mine. I can consider fighting them next turn. Not just yet. Not just yet. Or next week, rather. And there is purple. Purple has gone through this lith here. It's going to be Vespered. They don't have an awful lot to their name, but they are scouting quickly. Very, very quickly. Who is in this jail? In a dazzling display of daring, you break into the local jail and free the hero in prison there who in return pledges loyalty to your cause. This is going to be Rialdo, the necromancer. Oh, that's not good. Ah, well, Rialdo, the necromancer is just kind of a nobody as I immediately dismiss the two speed zombies and worse than a nobody, he actually takes 250 gold from my castle, my kingdom per day. Yeah, we're getting now 1,000 gold per day, effectively removing the 250 gold we had from Middlegate. Ouch. That was one of the few advantages I've, I've had on this map, and now that feels like that's completely wasted. For now, I'm gonna have him try and explore, and maybe he can still be useful as a scout. Uh, we're gonna have to wait and find out. This is actually really nice. Folks, look what we have found. Look at this. So the fort is okay. That's not really what I care about. I don't think that Rebecca is going to be my main hero anymore. But this artifact, which is unfortunately guarded by a nearby Titan, is maybe the best artifact on this map ever. This is... Oh, no. 
This is the seeing eye pendant and the ability to remove the ability to get blinded from unicorns is nice, but it's not going to me because Titans are just too much to handle. I'm so sad. I'm so very sad. I've decided that I want these unicorns because I really want the ore mine. And so we're gonna pick up troops tomorrow. We're gonna go and fight. And we're gonna hope for the very, very best. We will see how this goes. Uh, Avatar, Fixbox is a fighter who's not giving up. What a hero, let's do our best. Yep, let's do our best. Uh, yeah, uh, lots of things to polish left. Woohoo, first blood. Yeah, we did get first blood. That feels excellent. And by the way, um, my analysis of the F Heroes 2 game, um, if you hear me say negative things about it, for every one negative thing I might have to say about it, or one potential improvement, please hear me loud and clear when I say that there's 10 positive things about it. If you're not playing Heroes of Might and Magic 2 with the F Heroes 2 edition, uh, in the year 2024, you are missing out. It is the de facto way of playing Heroes of Might and Magic 2, in my humble opinion. The forum says the good old tax lien. That's an oof from Lord Shadowing. Ugh. Haha, <laughs> you got hosed. Sorry, says Avatar. Uh, immediately dismiss the tax lien. I, I do want to... I'll, I'll take the, the hit. I think it's worth 250 gold per day until Rialdo is no longer worth my time. That's my thought process. So... We are probably going to dismiss him soon. We're going to give him just a little bit of play for one more moment. Do we have any other purchases we can make? I don't think that the cottage is actually going to be that useful. Let's pick up the crystal garden though. Let's do that. And on to a new day. And then let's see. Laform says, that's what you get for rescuing bad guys. And he is Rialdo the necromancer. So he is kind of a bad guy. I do agree. You know, jail text didn't change from Heroes of Might and Magic 2 to Heroes of Might and Magic 3. I did not distinctly recognize that. Uh, it's not often that I come across a jail in Heroes 3, uh, but interesting. I like the things that stayed the same from 2 to 3. I, I don't think that that was laziness at all. There's some things that just cannot be improved upon. There you go. Lord Shadowing, you know, I think he was imprisoned for tax evasion. <laughs> yes, he was. He was. Uh, also, the Titan guarding the artifact is a random event, so that's an interesting addition to the already bad start. Hey, we're gonna overcome. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. F Heroes 2 is game of the year, game of the century. I agree with that. Folks are spitting wisdom. Since we're right here and we can get into the boat, let's pick up the plus one defense. Because why not? He really does look like a prison inmate. I definitely agree with that. Archers. We're gonna pick up archers. They're slow. I don't like that, but I am I'm, I'm putting this into my mind where I take Rialdo, we go back through the whirlpool, and we actually use him as a white elephant gift to give him and his negative artifacts to some other hero. That's my working plan with him at this moment. We will see how well or how poorly that works. Several unicorns. This is a lot. Um, but we're going to be okay. Let's actually keep... Hold on. Let's go into closed formation. Let's put the... Well... Let's put the dwarves in the middle. Let's put the elves that we want to keep alive here between the goblins and the dwarves. These sprites are probably just going to get off some damage. And let's hope that we don't lose here. Glorious victory. And this is going to be our opportunity to pick up some ore. So... On we go. On, Chauffeur. Let's see. Uh, you take Rialdo and feed him to the ghosts. Moral victory, not strategic. <laughs> that is maybe the best victory we could possibly have. The plan has one tiny issues. You'd get this tax lien back someday later. Oh, it's true. It's true. There, there's always an issue with the tax lien. I'm very happy that it's in the game, but it does have some issues. Here's the question. Do I go out and get 19 to 39 points of damage? Or do I stay here and guard the elves? I think I am content with actually having, let's see. I think I'm happy with just letting the elves do damage. The sprites can go up and, and die. And watch this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get our damage off on one of these double stacks. Hmm, this one. Not this one, but this one. Sprites are gonna go up and are they gonna clean up one more of these troops? No, they're gonna kill up the top stack. They do kill one unicorn there. Dwarves step up, and then the damage from three orcs doesn't matter. They're going to step up as well. 
the sprites are blind, that's probably going to actually keep them alive for longer. One unicorn goes down from the dwarves retaliation, and then thankfully the orcs actually do hold for one more round of combat. Looks like we are going to kill one unicorn there with these goblins. We are going to do our best to bring down the biggest, healthiest stack of unicorns. That's that one here. And as the damage falls out, I think that this prevents any unicorns from going down. Goblins are taking a hit like they ought to do. 13, 1, 1, and 6. I am fine with everything that just happened right there. This Book of the Elements doesn't really matter to me, as we pick up plus 2 ore per day from our ore mine, um, but we'll take it. You come across a conjurer who begs to accompany you and your army a while for safety. You agree, and he offers as payment a copy of the Book of the Elements. It doubles the effectiveness of all the heroes summoning spells. That's lovely. And then, ooh, we now found when close formation is good. Yeah, that's an instance where close formation turned out okay for us. We do have to remember to put it back on open formation, which as you can tell, I totally almost missed once. It would be nice if I could like right click on spread or close formation, um, like designate which one is standard, which I think everybody would keep as open formation. But then I could like right click here to indicate that for the next battle is one right click or for the next two battles, which is two right clicks, um, that that's how many battles we would be in close formation. I would actually really like that. I think that that'd be a, a nifty feature. I don't know how you program that. I, I always feel bad when I come up with ideas like that because it sounds good, but the poor person that actually has to make that a reality is probably hating my guts and that feels bad. I'd love Marketplace. I'd love the Thieves Guild. Eh. Eh. Eh, we don't have a lot of wood. We need to we need to stay alive and keep our wood as long as we can. I'm gonna take just two steps out of my way here. It looks like there's nothing else in the water. And so back into the whirlpool we go. Oh no, we lost two of the sprites. Very sad. Should we lose some more sprites? Sure, why not? An eerie wailing song emanates from the sirens perched upon the rocks. Many of your crew fall under its spell and dive into the water where they drown. You are now wiser for the visit and gain two experience. So we now know that sprites are worth two experience. I'm going to sail closer to the coast here. So that way we can see if there's like another prison. It's very interesting that this whole map appears to be boxed in by a border of some kind. Very interesting indeed. Uh, we're going to head back, by the way, as we do this fight was really well done. Bammy says, thank you. That unicorn fight. Thank you. I appreciate that. that that's good feedback. I sincerely appreciate that. And then the shortest step to level up. I've <laughs> ever seen <laughs> 89 experience high five oh yeah perfect uh rialdo is going to get 900 gold that means that he is more or less paid for himself for the next little bit no problems uh let's see i'm gonna switch to background viewing gonna play some elite have fun for sir thank you so much i appreciate all your insight and all your uh I love talking about the Aurora Borealis with you. Stay safe out there. If there's any problems out there with the flood water, please um, take very good care of yourself. Uh, so happy to have you in the background. Happy to have you in the forefront. Thank you for all your time here today. I'm a big fan. Thanks. You could sacrifice one peasant, one, for one experience. That's true. You would have to have that, those pretty particular circumstances, though. You'd have to go there with two peasants, wouldn't you? but it could happen. It could happen. It's day two. We are going to be able to get the stone hinge before the end of this week. That feels pretty good. I would love to pick up this gem mine up here. Packy unicorns. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we could. No, there's no, there's no way we're going to get a level two mage guild just not happening. A level two mage guild to roll the dice on maybe getting a summon boat could be pretty useful. I was looking at this air summoning altar just a second ago and it felt good before. It feels really good now knowing that there's now Medusa and, and air elementals. Do I roll the dice on another jail? I think not at this time. I think we're going to go away from the coast one space just so we can see a little bit more over here and we're going to land. We're going to pick up these free troops. We're going to have this really ragtag army and we're going to try and stone skin or rather petrify some unicorns. They blind us. We petrify them. That just seems like the way of the world at this point. 
Chris says, another person for having you in the background while I read my Kobo e-reader. Thanks for the stream. Thank you so much, Chris. Always a pleasure. It's really late over there. Uh, don't stay up on my account, but thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Avatar says, yes, another good use for the peasant. More than ghost fodder. Absolutely. Rialdo, world's first hero to ask for a salary. I want to see a scenario where somebody has your main hero and they are just loaded with tax liens. I think that'd be hilarious. Every single day, you like whatever gold you get that day, you have to spend it or else it's just gone. I think that'd be pretty funny. Do you get rid of Rialdo? Do you get rid of Rialdo or do you put him in the boat and try and do something with him? I think it's still worth 250 gold a day to me to have a second hero out there. I really do. Sounds weird. Sounds crazy, but I, I think that that's the way to go. Uh, purple is up to unicorns now. That's terrifying. We are definitely not going to get there anytime soon. We are going to step on the lift. We're going to hit space bar one time. Oh, no. One more time. Oh, perfect. That's where we're going to stay. I am going to abuse the space bar here. Given that we had such a poor start, I don't feel bad. Look, look me in my eyes. Do I feel bad? No, I don't. On to a new day. Um, earlier we mentioned the hurricanes, by the way, and and that got us to talking about floods and and all kind of all kinds of issues going on in the world right now. As we do pick up nine Medusa, as we pick up lightning bolt, we are thrilled with everything that's happening. Um, Back during the COVID era, toilet paper was really, really hard to find in my part of the world. I don't know why everybody thought to themselves that toilet paper was the thing to stockpile in the event of a wide emergency. Very interesting to note that bidets became very popular around that time, funny enough. But uh, when it comes down to it, the toilet paper was very, very difficult to find everywhere in my area for sure, but pretty much everywhere. And with the hurricanes and supply chains being cut and things like that, apparently that is back to being in vogue. Trying to find your, uh, trying to find toilet paper apparently is very, very nearly impossibly difficult at this current juncture. Who would have guessed? This connects, folks. Okay, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sail back, we're gonna pick up these troops, we're gonna sail back over here, we're gonna grab them on Sabu, and Sabu is gonna take Looks like it's going to be Air Elementals and Medusa, and he's going to go through the Stone Lits, and he's going to fight while he feels tough. I don't know if a Mage Guild is in the cards here for us. It's definitely going to be the Stonehenge this week. Oh, you've got to get... Oh, you have to get the... We have to get the Mage Guild. I forgot that that was a prerequisite. Um, and so we're not going to get the Druids this turn anyway, as we do see for the first time an enemy hero, Vesper, going into a boat. But, But this way... We can actually get some troops, and we can maybe, uh, maybe contend at least a little bit with our enemies. I'm not saying it's likely, but at least it's possible. So let's head in this direction, and then Rebecca's going to go solo. Just her and her one sprite. Thankfully, she does have some means to get into this cracked earth in the upper right. Hopefully, no other enemies are nearby. Mage Guild... Uh, we're still missing gold. We're going to pick that up tomorrow. And then go from there. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Technically, it's cheaper to have Rialdo for 10 days rather than hire a new hero. That is true. That is true. And he did pick up 900 gold in a little pile there. So he's kind of paying for himself a little bit. But I am hoping that he does go down very, very quickly. Uh, Dranny says, by the way, I've checked the original game some days ago. Medusas can actually petrify giants or titans. So there was no issue during one of your streams I visited before. Thank you for doing that research for me. That's awesome. And I, I do think that that's so nifty. It adds to the value of an already pretty good unit in the Medusa because a blind is not going to work. Uh, you know, a berserk is not going to work. But knowing that a petrify does work, that that just feels good to me. That feels right. And I'm very, very much for it. There is an ultimate artifact on this map, folks. We will see how lucky we can get with that. Very funny to see a four-leaf clover in the middle of a desert. Hmm, interesting how that works. 
and we don't see any enemies in this kind of gorilla position, the, the threat position, but we are going to head back now. Pick up this mage guild and then tomorrow we are going to get a spell book. It's going to be stone skin, dispel magic, magic arrow, and then next week we should hopefully be able to pick up some nice troops, uh, including those druids. Let's leave all the two speed creatures behind. Four speed, four speed, this is fine. And then let's plan on picking up some support from Rialdo tomorrow. What a what a very interesting scenario. As we do see, Ranger Growth is up plus five. Another Obelisk. First Obelisk here, but I mean, we're about three hours into this playthrough, so you know, Obelisk. And it looks like it's gonna be in the snowy area. If you see a graveyard, the ultimate artifact can't be too far away. And this road is pretty interesting. I think that we can probably guess, not here, not here, but maybe in this area. We're gonna have to look for that ultimate artifact just a little bit. Okay, uh, Flotsam here. It's gonna have to be Sabu that, Sabu that does this uh, pull of these troops. The archers are actually gonna be good garrison units, so we're gonna take them along with us. But not, they're not better than the archers, though. Uh, we want all these troops. We should have left a couple more troops at home, shouldn't we? Where did you come from? Where did you come from? That's not good. That's not good at all. Bearded man, bearded man, nice to see you. You could make another hero kill Rialdo, getting all the bad artifacts out of the way. That's totally my plan. He's gonna be like a little bit of a hero bomb. He's, he's just going to, uh, he's gonna be there just long enough to be useful and then soldier on from there. Uh, Rialdo is for now though, I do wanna get this shipwreck survivor. That could be a really nice artifact. You just never know. It, it It's one of those things where you can literally pick up the battle garb of Andrin from a shipwreck survivor. That might change our fortunes drastically. Uh, let's see, Avatar, true, he has the 10 day timer limit. He's almost to the end of that, by the way. Dismiss the sprite from Rebecca so she does not have bad morale. From Rebecca? Dismiss the one sprite so she has no bad morale? Aw, brats. And then let's see. Uh, the sad thing is, is that we're low on toilet paper, Fix Fox wife says. Ha. Oh, are we? Oh, dear. <laughs> Fix Fox uh, wife is in the chat saying that being low on toilet paper is like an actual real thing. Whoops. Folks, we only have a thousand gold. We cannot reach this castle. We're going to have to mount as successful a defense as we possibly can. We have to hold out. And thankfully, 17 dwarves is the right garrison unit to make this work. But I am very terrified about these prospects. We don't have a left turret, right turret. I, I am terrified. I am very highly concerned about the way that this fight is about to go. We'll do the best we can. Why is it always the toilet paper? People care about what matters the most. People know what matters the most. And toilet paper in an emergency, that's one of those creature comforts that we have not learned to live without. That's my, that's my thought process anyway. Yes! Folks, she ran away. That's lovely. She ran away. Jem the Sorceress decided not to be aggressive here, and I am all for it. She saw these dwarves, turned tail, and said, nah, not today, not today. It's gonna be uh, all these troops we can purchase. We have 2,000 gold here today. We do need to pick up the spell book. The dispel magic makes it totally worth it. And in just a moment, we're gonna figure out whether we sally forth right now or not. We need to find out what this is. Medal of Courage is absolutely perfect. Avatar has said Sabu's morale is worse than Swedish parliament. This is going to help in a big, big way. So I am happy with this. We're gonna sail around just a little bit and then uh, we will land in short order. Oh my goodness, this tree city. This is an opportunity I feel like I must take advantage of. Let's have Rebecca see if she can find some more gold or, or anything really. She can travel up in this direction or up here. I'm gonna have her go through the desert a little bit, maybe find something nice. And Rialdo, Rialdo's going to find me lots and lots of sprites. Yeah, sprites. This sawmill here is, is kind of a big deal. If there's enough sprites here with 16 archers, we might be able to defeat unicorns. Probably not, but maybe. We'll see. 
And then Drani says, yeah, the Titans are really a pain in battle with their mind spell immunity. All of the disabling spells more or less being taken off the table. Um, and, and yet it doesn't hurt my feelings. Um, that's part of what makes them comparable in some ways better and in some ways worse than our friends, the Black Dragons. Black Dragons you can't affect with spells. Titans you can mostly only affect with positive spells. I, I do think that that matters. And I think that that's a very nifty way for the original game designers to approach balance like that. If this is another hero with a tax lien, then he's getting dismissed immediately. <gasps> Wait, I've got an idea. What if I put all of the bad artifacts onto one hero? And then I dismiss the one bad hero. And then Rialdo won't have these bad artifacts. There we go. We now have a sacrificial goat that we're going to put all of our sinful materials onto, and they're just going to have to get rid of those very, very soon. Some of the sprites living in the Tree City are willing to join your army for a price. Do you want to recruit the sprites? I do. There's 64 here. It's going to take me a couple more turns to pick all these up. We're going to wait for now. I'm just going to scout down several unicorns. Last time it was stacks of one and two. If it's 10 unicorns, well, it won't be 10 unicorns. If it's nine unicorns, that's still too many. It's still way too many. But um, we're going to stay here. We're going to get into the boat tomorrow. And then we'll set sail north. No. Take what you can get. Get in the boat. And then we've got to make this, this change happen here as soon as we possibly can. And we shall. And we shall. Uh, or you could pick up another tax lien from a survivor too. Yeah, there you go. I said that about the sprite a while ago when she had three factions. Oh, you're right, Vammy, my bad. I, I get behind in chat and then things don't make as much sense. My apologies. Uh, Dispel, Bloodlust, and Disrupting Ray are the best spells for the Barbarian Hero. I totally agree. And right now we do currently have the Stone Skin and the Dispel Magic, which I'm very, very much a big fan of. So, so far, not too bad of spells for our Barbarian Hero here. With our negative 500 gold per day, we are hurting badly. There is a Dragon City. That's a very unique opportunity maybe in the future. Pack of Unicorns with maybe the one Crystal Mine on the map. One Gem Mine, one Crystal Mine. That could be pretty useful to know. And then Bambi says, I don't see how the Medal of Courage helps the Swedish Parliament, but hey, I don't know politics. Me neither. Avatar, sacrifice the goat. Fix Fox, big brain time. We need all the help we can get. Totally. Absolutely. We need all the help we can get. Because Rialdo got into the boat, we should be able to make this swap happen today. And so I will send over these terrible, terrible troops because sure, why not? Not the two speed zombies. And then give me all of your bad. If it's bad, if, it, if it's ugly, I will take it. And then Zam, unfortunately, must be dismissed. That feels good. All of a sudden, Rialdo feels like a much better option than he otherwise was. Uh, that does feel pretty good. So ultimately, do we come out ahead or do we come out behind? I'm satisfied with uh, the direction that that all, that that all went. <sighs> I want the badge of courage. And as soon as I get it, I want to move through these lifts and I want to start fighting. It's probably, it's probably not too far away until the enemy picks up more than just unicorns, maybe phoenixes. And they've probably been fighting each other quite a bit. But I can't waste time and find out. Gem is in a really tough spot here. Does the F Heroes 2 AI not know how to recruit heroes with bad artifacts? Good question. I don't know the answer to that. I'm excited to see if anybody does know the answer. Uh, we are going to pick up. We're going to pick up this badge of courage because we simply must. 30 additional sprites. We're going to leave these archers one more time. And then we're going to head back. It's day five. Maybe we even uh, pay to upgrade the dwarves in just one moment. But very soon, uh, Jim is going to feel our wrath. Okay. Uh, there's more archers here. I might as well pick them up. They could still be very, very useful for us as we get a little bit of sulfur and an extra 1,000 experience. What is also in this... Desert area, I do not know, but I do want to find out. I truly do. Okay. Yellow and purple are stepping all over each other, trying to get to me. Sabu, do you feel loved? Do you feel like the center of attention? The bell of the ball, as it were. If that were me, I sure would be feeling that way because you are 
eating, eating attention. You are the Lady Gaga of F Heroes 2. You need all the attention you can get. Otherwise, uh, otherwise, let's try and see what else we can find. I thought it was funny. I saw I saw a video the other day. Oh, who was it? I think it was like James Franco. Talking about Lady Gaga reminded me, um, but it was James Franco and he got on a dating app and he used an actual picture of himself. He's a famous actor in the United States. He did things like, oh, the Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. He was the best friend, stuff like that. And uh, and he's he's on this dating app and people are like, hey, that's a nice picture of James Franco. He's like, thanks, it's my picture. And they're like, no, it's not. And he goes, yeah, it is. And just kind of funny how hilarity ensued. And it brought to my attention the fact that nobody cares about dating sites anymore. Like dating sites and dating apps are more or less officially dead. Have you heard about this? I don't know if, I don't know how true this is, but that was the general vibe that this article I saw put out that dating sites, whether it's the, the bad mix of features whether it's the fact that everybody on dating apps are very like, I don't know, meat market kind of deals. Um, they are just not popular like they once were. Suffice to say one way or the other, I am grateful that in the year 2024 that I'm not currently dating because, oh my gosh, what a nightmare. It would hurt my heart trying to figure out what do you even do. And so for those of you who are, who are still unattached and trying to find that special somebody, do not lose hope. But my word, it it's rough out there. So stay safe. My goodness. Um, yeah, it hurts my heart. And I hope that you're doing OK wherever you may be. 19 dwarves left. Uh, Rathmont has zero attack, zero defense, four spell power, two knowledge, only 11 spell points left. He hasn't cast an offensive spell yet. Just lots of curses. And that's fine. We're going to let him do that. But with these dwarves slowly walking up the battlefield, I have no problem. I will eat as many of these slows or rather as many of these curses as you want. That doesn't hurt my heart at all, at all. Let's see, uh, the AI Dranik says, at least they know how to pick up the strongest heroes from the tavern, that's good. So they don't know how to avoid the weakest heroes, but they do know how to pick up the strongest heroes. Look, we can't ask for any more than that. That is, that's everything I need from my F Heroes 2 AI. I'm grateful for it. So I'm a big fan of that, no worries there. Two of the dwarves is going to be the final fight, and we turn a lot or a victory that was a little bit costly into a pretty easy win there. Note, as we do pick up the ballistics, what a good pickup and the leadership. Look at that. We're back in action. Um, as we pick these up, we're going to go through these lifts. I know the gem is here. I'm going to trust the goblins can hold on along with any of these troops along with the elves. We're gonna pick up these elves as defenders and we're gonna call that a day. If Jem can beat these forces, I'm gonna feel silly. I'm gonna feel really silly, but I think that I do want Sabi to get out there and fight. Oh no, I don't know if I wanna fight that though. That's a little scary. Uh, Sabu Gaga kind of sounds like a barbarian name bearded man says. <laughs> yeah, Lady Gaga. Sabu Gaga, that would actually be legit. That's going to be my new karaoke screen name. If ever we do karaoke as a group here, yeah, it's going to be Sabu Gaga. And you're going to know that that's Fix Fox. Fix Fox is so 2020. No, Sabu Gaga. That's the new me, folks. Get with the program in 2025. Coming to a theater near you. Bammy the Vampire. Is it the bell of the ball or the ball of the bell? Uh, it is the bell of the ball. Um, I don't know where that saying comes from. We're going to Google that real quick. Bell of the ball. Let's see. Old fashioned, the most beautiful and popular woman at the dance or the party. She was the bell of the ball. Generally, when I think of the, the word bell, I think of a southern bell is generally the way that I hear that being said. And it's like a young woman who is. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it necessarily means that they are young and attractive, but they are certainly like the focal point, the center point. And usually it is like the, the young, hot new thing at the ball. And so, yeah, it is a bell of the ball. And it's, it's actually, I think it's B-E-L-L-E -L -L -E is actually the way it's spelled too. 
Uh, Chris says the trouble with dating sites is that people expect to find the perfect partner, which doesn't exist. <gasps> Chris has cracked the code. Oh my gosh, that's so true. Unrealistic expectations and then being able to swipe through however many dating profiles leads you to, to not recognize true value when you see it. You're always chasing that high. You're chasing that perfect person and they just don't exist. Interesting. That is so interesting. Vammy, I did have Dispel for the Elves. I ended up saving the spell points, but I did I did save the Dispel. Uh, Lord Shadowing, either that or people are trying to find a one-night stand. That's true. And I guess for that purpose, for one-night stands, I'm guessing that dating apps actually do fairly well. Ooh, Wand of Negation. Makes your troops immune to Dispel Magic. I'm fine with that. And then, uh, let's see. Uh, you are so welcome for taking... <laughs> Fox wife says you are so welcome for me taking you off the market. Thank you, dear. I sincerely appreciate that. Lord Shadowing it. Uh, yeah, th that there too for the one night stand kind of deals. Dating apps. Avatar says, ah, I don't have a clue how to even. I would trip on my self-consciousness and die in shame digitally. Digitally die in shame. I I can understand that. It's, yeah, it's it's pretty rough out there. It's really pretty rough out there. Oh. 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 Is this a big enough army to pick up potentially tons and tons of unicorns? They've got lots of unicorns guarding this. In just a moment, we're going to have, what, 11 unicorns available? I don't know if I can defeat lots of unicorns with Sabu. I want to so very, very bad. I don't know about this army, though. I was really just trying to uh, force my way into the enemy's area. That was really my plan, uh, was find their main castle and and try and attack them before the beginning of the new week. That is going to be my ultimate plan. They're going to see me coming. I don't think that they can stop me. If this goes poorly, then I lose. If it goes well, then then good things abound. But yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of funny that the digital shame. <sighs> yeah, uh, I don't. It doesn't hurt my heart when people say that they met on a dating app. Um, there's people that I know that have met on dating apps and they're very embarrassed for it. In this modern era, it's 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 a totally viable way, but people still have have some stigma. They don't want to say that they met on a dating app, and I understand why not, because people might think that you were looking for a one night stand when you found this person that you ultimately ended up with. And so, yeah, the, the shame that can potentially come from that misunderstanding. Bambi says, ooh, that kind of the ball. I was thinking about sphere, spherical objects. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ball is in as a social gathering. And then there's that kind of bell, not a brass bell. Yep, we are speaking the same language. Gotcha there. Avatar, uh, Rialdo Tinder profile. I'm a guy with good economics, good looks, and good morale. Liar. I mean, it's better now. It's definitely better. Oh, what the irony. If you end up matching with Rialdo, I think that you immediately delete the app and you run away as far as you can. It's, it's gone. It's gone. Just let it go. We do see Troy Ann. She's looking pretty tough. I think I beat her. 51 archers. I think I think she's wandered way too close to me. And I think I'm going to beat her in just one second. We're going to split the archers into two stacks so you can't disable both stacks. We're going to have the skeletons in the middle. Do we even get rid of the skeletons so that our morale is just OK? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, Chris, what's the craze called that was around a decade or so ago? Speed dating or something where people would just chat to a potential date for three minutes and then move on to the next person. I always wondered if that kind of worked in a weird way. I guess it's possible. How important are first impressions? That's my question. How important are first impressions? If first impressions and the psychology behind it is is critically important, then speed dating allows you to get several first impressions, good or bad, in a very short amount of time. I could see that being interesting and having some quality use in order to find somebody that you're interested in. I could I could see that being a thing. Um, I don't know. Is it? I mean, definitely it's 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 possible. Are you going to find love that way? Most of the time, people just need to find somebody like that's the real thing is is not that 
like I'm not a good person or I can't get along with people. It's that I'm I'm having trouble finding a good person. And so speed dating gives you the opportunity to find more people in a short amount of time, therefore raising your odds of finding somebody that you click with. So, I mean, there's some, I, I think that speed dating has some some value. The, the fear is, is are you going to immediately reject somebody if they don't blow you out of the water? And are you gonna miss a great opportunity in the meat market because you're just waiting to see what's next. Oh, what's next? What's next? What's next? That human mindset of, I want the very best thing, and so I'm gonna wait to see what my options are. And by keeping my options open, I actually lose the thing that I would have really wanted the most. I fear that that does happen quite a bit. This is bad. I don't know if Hampshire has lots of defenders. I have to assume that it does not. Let's hope that we don't die here. It's a glorious victory. Let's make it happen, folks. Bammy says, I was thinking about the fact that a bell rings because of its ball, and the ball is the central part of the instrument. That makes more sense in this context, hence why I thought it would be the bell of or the ball of the bell. It's so interesting. I had not considered that. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'm definitely on the same page with you, and uh, and I'm and I'm glad we're on the same page, because that's that's smart. I'm all with you on that. Uh, Math Obsessed says, Imagine if every person you know had only the most delicious food. Would you consider having the best made steak or whatever you prefer special thing? Same goes for intimate relationships, plus most people make them a public fetish, true. So there is no surprise for me that you are chasing your ideal partner, missing the precious individuality of a person in front of you, and make efforts to build up your feelings and establish deep relationships there. That is so very important. And, and I gotta tell you, I think that of all the things in the world to settle for, the person that you marry is not the person you should settle for. That's something that you should absolutely never settle on. There, I know that there's people out there that say, well, I don't have any more opportunities or like, well, um, I mean, like, I guess I'm gonna, I, I gotta marry somebody now or maybe die alone. Like, I understand that, that fear. I understand that concern. I think that you're doing yourself an immediate disservice if you don't make your, your intimate relationship special. And so it's tough. There's this, there's this push pull. Do I, do I overlook somebody's faults and flaws? Do I shoot for the moon? Tough. Wow. There's so much good discussion there on that. I think that that's an excellent addition to this conversation. Wonderful. Uh, Avatar Rialdo. It's the inside that counts. Dead inside. <laughs> uh, Chris says, well, I'm divorced. And so I can't imagine being married again. Once was enough. Very pessimistic. I know, but I'm a pessimistic person due to my mental health diagnosis of bipolar disorder. I'm happy being single, to be honest. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. And Fix Fox wife can attest to this. I've said, I've said, I'm, I got married once. I'm not doing it again. Uh, that's my personal feeling on the matter. So like if, if my dear sweet wife were to pass away, um, I don't know if I would, I don't, I don't think I would look to remarry. I don't think that that would be a priority of mine. Um, I understand that I might feel a very, very different way later on down the road, but you know, whether it's, whether it's divorce, whether it's death, whether it's, you know, whatever the case is, it, it seems reasonable to me to say, look, there's a lot of opening up you have to do and like restarting with somebody and, you know, hey, relationships are hard for me or whatever. They can be very, very valuable. They can be very, very worth it, but never overlook the value of spending time with yourself. So I am, I think that that's totally a valid uh, place to be coming from there too. So absolutely. Oh, and you have two great daughters that you're thankful for. I love that. I, I, I'm really thrilled to hear that because yeah, um, I know my kid, my, my kiddo and my second kid that's on the way, they mean an awful lot to me. So my hope is, is that, uh, uh, I hope you get to spend all the time in the world with them. Time is a thief and they don't stay small forever. And that always makes me sad, but it is also the reality of the situation. Uh, at least it's the reality of my situation. Where did my little boy go? All of a sudden he's this giant. It's crazy. Ugh, it's crazy. He just came back from the doctor and he's like off the growth charts. He's double what most kids his age are. I don't know how I'm going to feed this kid, but I'm excited to find out. Okay, uh, we're going to head back to 
this sorceress uh, town. I know I just walked all the way to the ore mine and then I walked back. I'm playing suboptimally because I'm reminiscing as I'm playing. I'm thinking about my, my cute little kid and that makes me play worse. So sue me. Um, but we're picking up what we need. Uh, we're going to pick up troops and we're going to go see if we can scout that other castle for the sorceresses. And these troops, we did not have the resources to pick up these forces, but the enemy did. And that should be enough to make things go my way, I sure hope. I think that what we just saw there is purple, who's, I think that that's whose castle we just took. I think the purple is feeling the pressure. They do have one town to the south here. So they're not going to do something stupid, but they're probably feeling the pressure, realizing that they need to get on the board. They need to get more troops. And right now they've had their legs cut out from under them. If it was me, I'd be feeling really, really bad about that. So we're going to see what they have to do about that. Bammy says, all this talk about relationships. In my family, there were arranged marriages uh, just three generations ago. And how did those work? Now we have a little bit of distance between us and that time. Um, so we have some history on our side. Do we know, um, did those relationships work out well? Um, were, were they were they ultimately good? Were they ultimately bad? Um, were there unforeseen problems? I'm sure that because you're here, that you're happy that it happened, because if you, hey, if it doesn't happen, you're not here. Um, yeah, any any additional thoughts on that? I'm very interested to hear that. 2,000 gold to make these two-speed dwarves up to four-speed dwarves. It's, it's costly, but I am going to do that at this time. And I think we're for sure going to get elves, six more elves. Medusa are going to stay and with 2,100 gold. We're actually going to do it like this. Okay. This is our fighting force. It's not much, but it's what I got. Man, you guys just are so good at typing and I'm so slow at speaking. Please forgive me. Uh, fix Foxy wife. She's a keeper. She is such a keeper. I love her. Uh, fix, uh, Chris says, I just concentrate on them. Definitely. Definitely. And that's being a good, uh, that's being a good parent. That's always being a good parent. Um, I'm very, very much for that. So my hat's off to you to spend the time with them. Lord Shadowing says, this might be an odd thought. And then there's more following, I'm sure. Bearded Man says to Vami, in Greece, we had arranged marriages just two generations ago. There you go. Okay. And in some families, I'm sure that that's still kind of the way that things are. I'm sure that it is. I could be wrong, but I'm sure that there are places where that's still definitely just like the way of the world. And no judgment here on that. Um, let's see. And then Math Obsessed saying to Chris, uh, two great daughters is more than most people can ever dream of or even dream of. If you're happy with your daughters, it's hard to believe that you're pessimistic in your heart of hearts with a big heart. Um, um, I love that. That's, I like that. I like that. Um, and then following up with, although mental uh, health disorders are not a joke, tell you what, it, it is, I think a lot of people's concern and very, very sad to see when Young people or media treat mental health conditions like it's something to be envious of, like, LOL, oh my gosh, my, I'm so OCD. It's like, man, if you were actually OCD, you would not be saying that, right? I think we've all seen that. Uh, people who fake things like Tourette's for attention, oh my gosh, it hurts my heart because I do feel bad for all the people that, well, I feel bad for all the people that uh, do have to uh, suffer with that, so. Yeah, whatever, whatever the mental health concern. Yeah, uh, hope that hope that it goes very, very well for people. Avatar says, yes, that was odd. Uh, let's see. Oh, focusing on that. OK, gotcha. Um, that was what uh, Lord Shadowing's previous com comment was. It was directed at you. Gotcha. And then uh, let's play fan. Uh, marriage is not always about sunshines and rainbows. Mine is 18 years old with serious health issues and tough times. Well, love prevails. Love your own journey, guys. You are not the terrible, unwanted things that might unfortunately have happened to you. I appreciate every ounce of that conversation there. I think that that is, is wonderfully uplifting. I think that that's wonderfully encouraging, strengthening, and I'm all for it. Dranny, you're totally right. I did miss the clover. Thank you. Dranny said that I missed the clover in the fortune sands. We will head there soon. 
And then Lord Shadowing says, this might be the odd thought, but I think that there should be a feature where you can set handicaps on the AI. Also another feature to have a zero player game and be able to watch the AI play each other with a thought log to the side. I'll bet that that's somewhere in the, in the F Heroes 2 uh, team like debug feature. I'll bet that that's part of the debug feature. I don't know, but I'm guessing that that is actually a thing. So maybe somebody else can give us some more information on that as we do come upon Brownston. If we lose, that's bad. But if we win, we have taken not one, not not one, but two of our enemy sorceress holdings. Uh, we're gonna throw this on auto so I can I can take a look at this. Lord Shadowing with the multiple no bully emotes, which I'm all for. Chris says, thank you, Math Obsessed. That's comforting. And then Avatar says, yeah, I would like to see the AI battle each other to learn how they think. It's so fun watching the AI think. It's so fun watching the AI think. I'm, I'm very much for it. Uh, very interesting to see the AI play so very, very well. And one of my favorite instances of that was Ghost Planet. I, I lost a fight that the AI on my behalf was able to win. I had to watch the fight several times just to see how the AI was able to make that happen. And it was truly a, a sight to behold. So definitely, definitely. I'm gonna interrupt the auto combat here just so I can do one magic arrow here. I'm just gonna re-engage the auto combat. Oh, glorious victory. Eh, it went better anyway. Mysticism actually is kind of interesting here. There is snow, so we're gonna take the pathfinding. And folks, we've done it. We now have a third sorceress castle. It feels like we are in control. Feels like this is the place to be. Um, so before we do anything else, let's actually make sure that we purchase some defenders everywhere we go. Might as well. Might as well. Especially since Jem is skulking about over here. Uh, let's see. Let's pull out some of these. Oh, sprites. Oh, never mind. We're out of gold. Probably because Rialdo was stuffing his face full of donuts the other day at 250 gold apiece. Oh wait, no, he got rid of the axe lane. Never mind. Never mind. Let's see. Uh, yeah, debug build can play all player AIs against each other. Very interesting. Very interesting. I'd love to dig into that sometime. Maybe that could be a future Fix Fox shoutcast. Is not Fix Fox watching a player, but Fix Fox and uh, analyzing player or computer against computer. That would actually be pretty nifty. What in the world? Look at that. These guys start off with a big bonus. Was there an artifact right here that I missed and some other player picked it up? There might have been an artifact that I just straight up did not see. It's quite possible. There's no defenders here. I'm not going to leave any. Uh, Sabu, I think, does want these Nomad boots. Then again, I do want to try and defeat Vesper. Can Hampshire hold? We purchase everybody. That's only going to be eight dwarves with eight ore and left turret, right turret. I, I actually think that Carlon is fine. She's got spells. She's got some troops. They're not great, but this should be enough to hold on to this town. That is my hope. And so for that reason, I have hope that we can hold on to this. Let's go and defeat these unicorns. Pick up the ore mine, and most importantly, we are going to grab the Nomad's Boots. That's what I'm really doing this for. It's not really the plus two ore per day, although that does help just a little bit. Spells to have might be the Steel Skin in just a moment. We will see. We will see. And Medusa step up. Dwarves step down. Everybody fend for yourselves. We did exactly 41 damage, which is nice. I killed one full unicorn. And then this is the choice. Do you go forward and try and attack and get damage off? Or do you go into a defensive position? I am going to opt to go and do damage. We can kill one unicorn now. Let's just go kill one unicorn. Oh, and instantly it was a mistake. Uh, the elves are, or rather the druids are going to have to fend for themselves for just one day. Just one day, folks. Can I, can I have you take care of yourselves for one day without me having to worry about you? Uh, it was good that we went out to attack. This worked out really, really well. Uh, another unicorn does not go down. We will kill them on the retaliation. We might be able to kill this one unicorn here. We do. Perfect. Okay. And that's perfectly fine. We're going to end the battle in just one second. And then uh, is there a thought log for that debug mode? Um, that's actually interesting. I imagine that there's something like that. 
uh, Drani can, of course, share more than, than I know. A nomad trader seeks protection from a tribe of goblins for your assistance. He gives you a finely crafted pair of boots made from the softest leather. Looking closely, you see fascinating ancient carvings engraved on the leather. Wonderful. Rialdo is stepping out in this direction. Good, good. And then Carlon is hoping for the best. Let's make that happen. Uh, <laughs> Bammy says, AI taking the jobs of the fixed Fox shoutcast submitters. I don't know how you always get me to laugh, but you always do. And I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much, Bammy. Uh, what if we could get chat GPT or alpha go to play heroes too? I don't know enough about it to even know what would or would not work there. That'd be very interesting to find out. I'm very interested to find out what is possible. So let's kill, uh, let's see, two greater druids. Let's just keep the damage on. We're going to skip. We're going to take so much ranged damage. I'm guessing that Vesper might have archery because they're doing it looks like full damage over the wall. Ouch. That magic arrow really did hurt a lot. Unicorn stayed alive. That's nice. Another cold ray. And we'll go from there. Skip, 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 skip. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to see AI take a crack at Heroes 2. What if they came up with strategies that we've never before seen or heard of? What if we all learned from this from this very terrifying AI? It's very much possible. Even though this fight is gonna be a loss, we have done our due diligence. Um, this does not feel bad to me. We are going to lose it here. There's two. And even if these elves didn't kill, it would be the unicorns. But seven greater druids going down to our spells. I don't like to lose that castle, but we are not too far away from picking that back up. In the middle of a dry field, you find a four-leaf clover. It whispers its name to you. It says its name is uh, Feisty Mick. Feisty Mick. Unicorn Leaf. And it tells you to pick it up. And as you pick up the four leaf clover it whispers promises of providing plus one luck to you for the rest of your life it says that if you take it with you out of this barren field your children and your children's children will forever have good luck you don't really believe the four leaf unicorn or the four leaf clover but you do decide to take it just in case you get hungry down the road that is my new text bubble for the artifact four leaf lucky lucky clover if you don't like it I don't know what to tell you. That's just, I'm pretty sure that that's exactly what the writers meant to put. They just made a couple of spelling errors. Sorry. Okay. Uh, math obsessed. Maybe it was a starving unicorn. Aww. Might have been. <laughs> Aww. We're going to fight this fight. We're going to lose? No, we're not. We're going to do even better. Uh, let's see. I tried with 3.0. I had to railroad it so much. However, something interesting might happen with 4.0. Uh, the one that reads the image is interesting. Okay. Bearded Man says LLMs tend to have terrible strategic abilities since all they are is fancy. Uh, next word predictors. That is true. That is very, very true. It's fun to watch them try and play chess because they're going to say like rook to e5. And to do that, the rook has to hop over five of its own units and it sounds good but it doesn't work all the more reason why it's so hilarious to me that a person a, a lawyer got in major trouble because he used chat gpt to write their their brief that they put before a judge and it was all fake it was all cases that sounded legit and sounded good but it was not real evidence and the person that was on the other side uh, realized that they called them out and the person lost their license. So we all need to be a little bit careful with that. This fight's not going to go well. That's okay. Uh, true, true. We will see what the future holds. And then there's a game called Galactic Civilizations 4, which uses a form of jet, chat GPT to launch, generate unique factions to play in the game. It's rather cool. That sounds interesting. Um, I do like, I really love the idea of, oh, what do you call it? Generative games where the playthrough is different from playthrough to playthrough. I think that that's kind of the concept of these roguelikes. I think that that's one of the features of a roguelike. But more than that, it's the idea that it will change from playthrough to playthrough and there's going to be like options to make the playthrough unique in a customizable way for you. Like for you, it's going to be making the world in the way that you want. 
I'm not explaining it very well, but uh, pretty interesting to think uh, the possibilities with AI in that regard. Math Obsessed says, oh, they will for sure, although these strategies will most likely be impossible to implement for a human. Very true. The, the details that go into the math there, I think, are always going to be a little bit out of reach for us mere mortals. Uh, a good example was AI playing StarCraft to mining gas through a bunker to increase the mining speed spamming to with 5,000 APM. Oh my gosh, I've never heard of that before, but I love that because I did like StarCraft 2. There was a time where it was it was a big, big game that I was playing. Um, and wow, very, very cool. Uh, I couldn't even imagine what 5,000 APM would even look like, but I would love to see it in action. Oh my goodness. So very cool. We're going to waste the damage here. We're going to kill one greater druid. And I'm fine with that. Looks like there's six hit points there. Maybe we can kill one. We do. Uh, someday soon, the AI, Avatar says, will be so smart and predicted that it won't be much of a match anymore for people trying to play AI. And then I guess PvP will be more common. You know what? That is genius. So I realized a long time ago, I shouldn't say a long time ago, I realized that I appreciate single player well-made single player games more than I appreciate the competitive scene because I don't like to min-max games and I don't really love the negatives that come along with it, right? I, I don't love, I don't love the, the, not the competitive portion of it. I do love the competitive portion of gaming, um, but I didn't love that it was all about min-maxing. I did not love that it was very, very, toxic in some ways but after computer models get so good at games and gaming it may be the only thing you can do to play against players because then that's going to be actual skill-based matchmaking the ai is not going to be able to give you better skill-based matchmaking <gasps> i messed up oh no i did not think that the magic arrow was going to come out and that cost us sabu the barbarian folks we just lost our main hero fix fox took a bad start and we've made it even worse oh no oh no we were we should have run one full turn before that they killed nine dwarves there i did not anticipate that they would kill nine dwarves fix fox has made a critical error and now rialdo is our number one hero oh that's about the worst thing i could think of the only thing i can do to make this right and I mean, the only thing I can do to make this right is immediately use Rialdo to go and take this castle back. That's it. That's, that's, that's the only thing that I can do to salvage this game at this point. If I can end up in the right spot. I'm looking for this lith. Oh, I'm on the wrong lith. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, we're going to get to the right lith. One second. <laughs> My bad. I think that there's one. There it is. We're going we're gonna to pop into their next turn, but my word, uh, what an error. Thankfully, with these archers, it's day seven. We may just be able to take Hampshire before Purple gets their footing back. My word. Fixbox got busy talking. How often have you heard Fixbox say that? Okay, on to a new day. Oh, there he is. There he goes. And, oh, I don't know if I can reach from here over beach terrain with these troops. I don't think we can reach. I do not think we can reach, but that doesn't mean I have to let Vesper go. Yes, it does, because he's standing on the lift. So let's just try. Let's try. Let's give ourselves the best opportunity and we'll go from there. Oh, I clicked too fast. I was trying to read chat and play at the same time. Uh, Avatar says Vami. That's a genius move. Nice to know. Nice to know. It's we. Yeah, we can't get there. And they're going to have tons and tons of forces in just a moment there. Uh, let's bring troops up to the front. Let's purchase everybody here. Let's purchase everybody over here. Yeah, that's fine. And then we're out of gold, but at least we're going to stay alive. And then maybe Rebecca actually becomes the conquering hero and returns. Maybe she picks up this uh, plus one attack skill and then goes from there. You enter the arena and face a pack of vicious lions. You handily defeat them to the wild cheers of the crowd. Impressed by your skill, the aged trainer of gladiators agrees to train you in your choice of skills. Bearded Man says, lower difficulty options will always be available. That's very, very true. And then uh, Chris says, be right back. Just switching devices, going to bed to watch the rest of the stream. Uh, are you sure you want to do that after the critical error that we just made? Oh, uh, let's see. We can get gem. I, I'm going to kill who I can kill while I can kill them. 
And then uh, beer demand, yes, probably so. And how smart do you tweak it to be? Definitely, definitely. Some people are saying that the F Heroes 2 AI currently is too tough for them. And I don't think that you're wrong. Um, I think that for some people, the hardest difficulty on F Heroes 2 right now is too difficult for the majority of people. But in that way, it's, you know, easy, medium, and hard. So that way you can uh, tailor it to what works best for you. I mean, that's why we have it the way it is. But, um, but right now, in some ways, uh, it's, it's definitely too strong for some people already. And then let's see, uh, can't beat anything above hard for now. Avatar says me neither. Laform says LOL. Uh, Math obsessed. This is when Fix Fox made his error, and everybody is agreeing that that was a funny mo funny moment. Uh, I blame the chat. I blame us too. We are way too distracted. You guys are the best. This is not distracting. This is helping me stay sharp. You're you're making my brain grow bigger so I can do more things at once. So thank you. I appreciate this. This is like a workout for me. It's great as we uh, use no more gold to purchase troops because, hey, we got no more troops to purchase. Uh, sorry, let's help the Fox focus. No, uh -uh. Uh, we're doing we're doing fine. We're going to win. We're going to win. Uh, Axel, let's play a lot, fam. Um, have to quit, but very happy about this first time on your stream, Fix Fox. We'll definitely be back. Cheers, guys. Hey, appreciate you so much. Have a wonderful day. Uh, I'm grateful for the time you spent with us. It's been an absolute pleasure. We will catch you around. Thank you. And then... Uh, uh, let's see, we'll see ya, take care. Wow, that hero was a troll with those artifacts. Zarfall, you are totally right. Uh, thanks again, Zarfall, nice to see you here again. Uh, I, I didn't, I felt bad the other day. I realized that I didn't I didn't make a huge deal of you being there and taking that time to, to chat with us uh, yesterday. I just kind of read your comment and then kind of went on. Uh, thanks so much for being back, I appreciate having you. I don't, I don't want you to feel like you have to say stuff when you're here, but I did want to let you know that I see you. I see you, man see you and I appreciate you thanks so much we're gonna pull all these troops in and the morale is bad it's so bad this is bad it's time for another hero it's not gonna be real though maybe though there's another hero that we could hire like maybe there's like another I don't know maybe there's a knight would be ideal maybe we wait a week maybe we consolidate we wait a week and then we we sally forth it's going to give them two weeks in Hampshire, but we're going to have two weeks of these troops as well. I think that we'll be fine. Let's let's play this slower. Let's play this smart. Unless the enemy runs right into our face. Oh, uh, Lord Shadowing, the difficulty is where I was thinking the user should be able to set one or two levels of handicap onto the AI. And we do kind of have that. We do have a little bit of, of a handicap available to us. I guess that we're going to kill this guy. Strange, okay. Um, because we do have the shackles. You have the, the rope shackles, you have the steel shackles, and that eliminates some of the resources that you can pull in at any given point. So that's pretty useful. Um, I'm wondering if you have any other ideas about what you'd like to see as far as penalties or debuffs uh, to help the player find the appropriate difficulty level. Because I think there's, there's probably lots of different ways you could approach uh, handicapping a player so that they can be the very best that uh, that they can be and still provide a good gaming experience. Let's kill here. We're going to take the damage from the unicorns. Never mind. Five and four. It feels like I lost a lot of more troops there than I would have liked, but it is what it is. Let's go fight. Let's go fight. And then... Uh, Vami says, one thing I'd like to ask, I noticed that in games that go for longer at some point, any arenas, regardless of having been actually visited or not, refuse to let heroes in. Why does this happen? So one thing to consider is, you know, for example, Rebecca can't go to the arena. It says already visited. Rialdo, not visited. It's possible for a hero to have been purchased by another faction, by somebody else. It was they were purchased. They were adventuring and they already got to that arena. It's possible that if you're not the first person to own that hero, that then you're just, you know, they've already lost that ability to pick up that buff. Um, that does happen. Stealth Shield of Protection looks pretty good. And, uh, and not always is that the case, but I'm wondering if maybe that's happened to you in the past. Possible. It's possible. Uh, let's see, Rebecca. This is a lot of forces. Let's try and go to Brownston with Rialdo. Pick up those forces and then let's not wait. I talked about maybe waiting. Let's not do that. Let's be hyper aggressive. 
and take these forces and overwhelm. We have two castles against one. We should be able to consider winning. Am I on the wrong lift? I need to go to here. Okay. And so we're gonna go, we're gonna come back here in just a moment. And so, Vami, I wonder if that's what's happened, or are you saying that this is a bug where heroes just won't be allowed at all um, to do that? Because I could, I could see that being possible. Um, I've never run into that myself, I don't think, but I wonder if, if that explanation I provided, if that could be what's happening, or if there's something else. I don't know, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it uh, and see, see what you think is the case. It's time to upgrade the cottage. Uh, Dwarves are really good. And we're gonna we're gonna pick up 10 just as garrison units in case something crazy happens. Skeletons are not that good because of morale issues. But this should be enough to keep some enemies at bay all the same. Okay, looks like two purple heroes on the map. Uh Lord Shadowing, but at the moment you can't put shackles on the AI. You can only put it on the player. Oh, I understand now. I did not understand before, but now I do. As we see Sandra the Necromancer, wonder where all of our gold has gone. Um, but that makes a lot more sense to me now that I understand that. Yeah. So, so doing that, um, from that perspective on the AI, putting more shackles on them, that could be very, very useful to help increase the, the smartness of the AI, increase the way it plays, but also provide some fine tuning to make sure that you are still getting the experience that you want as a player. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, there's no other forces here. We're going to head on through these lists, and hopefully we can actually hire another hero to bring tons of dwarves into this final army as well. That's my hope as well. Let's see. And Vami says, actually, uh, it also happens at the start of games. Interesting. I've never seen that. I've never seen that, but I'm, I'm very interested to find that out. I'm sure that the F Heroes 2 team would be very interested to know that, because I'm guessing that that's completely and totally unintended. There's, there, I can't possibly imagine that that's the way that that's supposed to be. So if you've seen that, I'm sure that they would appreciate very, very much uh, a heads up on that. Uh, Natasha is good. We don't want to fight her if we don't have to. Let's purchase one more hero. It's going to be Barak. He's going to be a little bit faster because of his four speed centaurs instead of the two speed dwarves with Astra. And we're going to buy all these dwarves. Boop. And we're going to buy all these elves. Boop. And sprites, sure, why not? And we're gonna go see if we can actually resupply before we fight Natasha. Um, we might be just barely out of range of her. Maybe just barely, but we will see. Lord Shadowing hit the prison. Uh, the moment must have, oh, hit the prison for Sandro. Yep, we did end up doing that, perfect. And then uh, Bearded Man, Vami. Uh, a very unlikely case is that you have been playing so long that your save file got corrupted somehow. Interesting. I had n I never would have considered that as a possibility, but that's interesting. I, I could potentially see that being a thing. Huh. Um, this is exactly what we wanted. We're gonna move troops over. And what's the best situation here? Our morale is so bad. Barak might get dismissed here. The dwarves have to be a part of this army. They are too good. They are too good. And if I put the dwarves in over 40 archers, morale goes up one more, but then you lose the damage from 40 archers. I could get rid of the goblins. And that has the same effect. I think the 40 archers is way better than the goblins. We're gonna have one stout stack of 24 dwarves, and we're gonna have all these ranged creatures fighting at a big penalty. I think that this is the best thing for us though. I think that Rialdo can now take this fight where he couldn't have before. This looks super chaotic. This looks super weird. Before I did not want to fight this fight, I think I do want to fight this fight now. I think I absolutely want this fight. Let's make it happen. Glorious victory. 1,000 experience points. Whew. Here we go. Bammy says, uh, I think it has something to do with the level of the hero, and when their level is too high, they're just no longer allowed in. Uh, give me as many details as possible, because I am so very interested in this. Um, I don't know anything about it. I really don't, but I would love to find out what's going on, because that sounds... Sounds like kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. There's a lot of places we can do damage. The druids are probably best against these greater druids just because of the way attack skill and defense skill works out. 
And then I do want to make sure that these sprites don't get to do damage to anybody else. This is a waste of damage on these elves, but we're going to do that. And then spells. We could haste the dwarves. Is that going to get us there? It is. We're going to haste these dwarves from 4 speed up to 6 speed. They are so fast. They are, they are not blazing fast, but they are very... They are very blind, and they're very fast. Unicorn's down to two. Two hit points left. I'm not going to worry about them. These dwarves are going to take at least one more turn to get down the battlefield. I doubt that they're going to haste them as well. They could. We'll see. And then these troops have already gone. Let's start working on these dwarves. I don't think that they're going to run just yet. No. Oh, no. But if I attack here, five speed creatures goes down. We should be able to get the first shot off. No. Oh, the greater druids were over there. Okay. Uh, this will do it, though. We are going to take down Natasha, the sorceress. She's not going to get away. 1,000 experience. If I find one more... Taxlene, Hideous Mask, or one other thing, I'm just going to... I'm just going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. Thankfully, that looks like that's not the case. Yeah, I, I was worried it was going to be a Taxlene, Hideous Mask, or Fizbin. Glad to hear that's not. I don't think we can reach over here. Let's plan on landing here. No. Oh, Phoenix is. No. Is this army big enough to defeat four Phoenixes? No. Bearded Man says, Pff. and then the Hasted Dwarves look so funny from Avatar. Definitely. Nothing to do with your speed if you're blind. Yeah. Nothing to do with your speed if you're blind, folks. They have Phoenixes. It's almost day one. I don't think we can reach. Oh, no, we totally can. Hold on. We're going to go through the list. We're going to get here. And then on day one, we're going to be able to defeat Agar. And and this is going to be the game. It's going to be the game. If we are able to get to Agar, I think that we are just going to call this a win. This boat is inaccessible. And because it's inaccessible, I am going to dismiss Sandro. I don't need I don't need his bad juju in my life any longer. Uh, we're going to have, let's see, Rialdo step in. And we're trying to get to these lifts. Tell you what, uh, because we gave ourselves a poor start, I justified using the space bar as if uh, it was only fair. And now as I'm sitting here, I realize that we've absolutely abused this into the ground. And the AI really has no chance when I when I use this strategy. It's just not fair. Um, as you can tell, as I'm saying this, as I say, oh, it's not fair, it's horrible of me, it removes the strategy. Note that I didn't stop using it. <laughs> I did not, I didn't stop using it, even though the thought came to my head. That is what we in the field of psychology call cognitive dissonance, where we believe one thing and we feel that another can also be true, even when it's not. Okay, uh, but if this is only one Phoenix, I think that we can win. Do we have enough wood to get anything else? Uh, as far as like a thieves guild no we're not gonna trade for it so here we go folks it's go time for agar go for agar is that what avatar is saying lord shadowing been playing with the ai song generation some generated songs are real bangers totally there is a there's a person that i'm subscribed to on this channel um it's planet zoid star zoids were a japanese toy from the 90s and maybe maybe even the 80s and they were kind of like, if you know about Power Rangers, they were kind of like Power Rangers in some way. And Planet Zoidstar, the, the guy that runs his little channel, it's I shouldn't say little, it's a, it's a pretty booming channel. He uses AI generated songs to, you know, talk about the, the different mech Zoids. And it really turns out some awesome bangers. It sounds like punk pop. It sounds like some 41 mixed with Green Day, mixed with The Offspring. It's got this like, ah, uh, it's, it's good. So yeah, AI generated songs, super good. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, folks, the AI says that we're gonna win this fight. And if we are able to pick up three Phoenixes, I think that this scenario is all but in the bag. This 27 hit points on Phoenixes, I'm not gonna worry about that. Let's kill 14 Sprites. Somebody else is gonna deal with these six Centaurs and the Sprites cannot help themselves like a moth to the flame. They're going to come out to play. Let's kill sprites here. I think that we can uh, defeat the phoenixes on this retaliation in just one second. Let's do it here. 15 damage, 18 more halflings, so be it. 
I don't want to say I didn't like the halflings, but it doesn't hurt my heart. And folks, Rialdo went from being a nobody to being the hero of the day. Amazing. With the pathfinding and picking up Phoenixes, I think that this is going to be a win, 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 win. Ah. Spacebar travel is approved, says Avatar. Sabu is back in the tavern, is he? Oh, did I miss Sabu? Oh, I miss Sabu. And then Dranny says that I clicked through to the new day and he's like, well, Fix Fox missed that. I totally missed it. Oh no. You know what though? Rialdo has earned this chance. This is like some sports team. You got the backup player who's just waiting for their chance. The star player goes down, they go into the game and they win the championship and they get all the glory. It's Rialdo's time to shine. And, and I can't be mad about that. Rialdo, you ugly son of a gun. With my blessing, enjoy the day. You have earned this honor. Uh, folks, uh, I don't even know if there's any other enemy heroes on the map here anymore. Uh, we're going to see. It looks like no. It looks like from this point on, we're just going to buy the rest of these troops here. We're going to upgrade where we can. And with Phoenixes, I think that this scenario is done and dusted. I don't believe that other than the towns to the south, that there are any more creatures. That means that we're going to have to go through unicorns a couple of times. We're going to fight our unicorns first. Um, and that way we can pick up a few more unicorns to supplement our forces. And once we do that, I think that this is going to be uh, a fun medium map playthrough that had many twists and turns uh, and ultimately ended up being a lot funner than it had any business being. Math Obsessed says, I'm not sure if the AI of Heroes 2 can feel unfairness, so it doesn't matter. Yes, you're totally true, Math Obsessed. But here's here's a secret. I care about what you people think. I really do. I care about what you people think. And if you think it's a cheat, then I have to consider that. I am forced to consider that maybe this is not the best thing for me to do. These unicorns are going to take two turns to get down the battlefield. We have two spell power. I could steel skin now and then maybe do a bless. No, I don't have bless. I could do a bloodlust. I could do two curses. Two curses would actually save a lot of damage. Let's do that. Let's curse here and then here. We're going to skip. We're going to do full damage to this top stack a couple of times. Mm, Phoenixes are going to go attack them. We're going to hope that unicorns come down in this direction in just one second here and they go up north. Interesting. Huh, do I attack here? I think I might as well. Because Phoenixes are going to go up there. So let's just have these other troops just stay in the way. And so one more curse. And again, excellent use of the bless because unicorns do between seven to 14 damage. Also an excellent use of the curse make sure that they are doing as minimal damage as possible. We do not eat the blind there. That feels pretty good. I am going to take one more swipe of these unicorns. That good luck is a big plus for me. And then, oh, I think that these unicorns are going to get to go first. Yes, these ones are going to go first. They're going to step up into here. So we're going to kill them before um, just to prevent more damage from going down. Oh, never mind. My unicorns get to go. And that's actually going to make things go pretty OK. I don't care if I lose these troops. We're just going to sit and wait. We're going to skip and do ranged damage for days. For days. Skip. That's fine by me. Anything to save a couple of phoenixes. The poor dwarves are like, are you guys going to help? Uh, no, uh, no, we're really not. This is all you friends. Best of luck. Uh, yeah, but we don't lose a single single Phoenix here and that feels really awesome. So very costly that cost us 19 dwarves and one unicorn, but for 1400 experience and even the necromancy. Sure. Why not? Uh, plus all these unicorns, 14 unicorns here. They're immediately going to replace these skeletons. Uh, we just got much stronger. We are rolling through this playthrough uh, avatar. Yeah. Yep. Agar did go down. I'm going to see about trying to generate a song or two about Heroes 2 and posting them on the Discord. I would love that. That'd be awesome. Please do. Please do. Uh, I think that there's lots of opportunities to, to just have fun stuff with AI. And that's going to be one of my all time favorites. If you do that, you'll be one of my favorite people. So please do. Bearded Man says, hail unicorns. Yes. Yes. At this point, we have now seen them. They are our friends. 
and they're going to help make these fights go even better. We're going to put the unicorns to the top, and this fight goes pretty okay now. Uh, Avatar says, this map is the sunshine story where Rialdo gets wrongly evicted and sentenced to jail for tax fraud, illegal moral rioting, and bad looks, and then his way back to redemption, where he gets all the gold, all the babes on Tinder, and all the respect as the king of the whole land, legendary hero. Who would have thought that this guy, this guy, would have such a triumphant return to prominence? Um, we're going to... <laughs> We're gonna cast curse. That's perfect, by the way. Thank you for taking the time to write that, because that made my day. We're gonna we're still gonna do tons of damage. These 14 unicorns are probably gonna eat. Or they're probably gonna take the, the steel skin. We're probably gonna steel skin the unicorns. Uh we're gonna step up, kill four here, take a little bit of damage. One unicorn does go down. We blind them. And we do have some opportunities with the unicorns, or excuse me, with the phoenixes to do a double hex attack. I think that we're going to make that happen. We're going to kill in this direction. So looks like it was two and four. I always thought it was interesting that the damage is calculated for both stacks. If you notice there, the phoenixes only did enough damage to kill two unicorns here, but they did enough damage on the second hex of their breath attack to do the damage here. Now. Why is that important from a game-making perspective? That's very important because you have to do that. You have to. Um, because each creature is going to have different amounts of damage dealt to them because of the way that uh, attack skill and defense skill works out. And so you're going to have to make calculations each time. And so it makes sense that both individual stacks would get calculated, thus providing you with the opportunity to get... Uh, different damages on two different types of units. So, interesting. I think it's interesting. It, it looks a little bit weird, but I think that that's absolutely the correct way of doing that. We did lose a Phoenix there, so we fought that fight worse. Oops, my bad. So be it. We're going to fight Yorksford. It looks like it's going to be a couple of skeletons here. No, wait. <gasps> Purple purchased all of their unicorns. Interesting. Very interesting. That's so crazy. I did not think that would happen. These unicorns are going to get the curse in just a moment. Uh, let's just do damage where we can. Let's hope that we can kill multiple unicorns with the double hex attack in a moment. Yeah, this looks pretty bad for our foes here. Bammy says, I opened the map editor, played around a bit. For any hero, once a hero visits the arena, they cannot visit any other arenas. That is very, that is true. Um, I, I thought that that was a mistake the very first time I saw it too. I thought that you should be able to visit the arena if it's a different arena as many times as you want. Uh, only one arena, which I don't know if that's a balanced idea or what, but I'm glad that you just did the research on that. So very interesting. Thank you, Vami, for, for reporting back to us on that. Thank you for helping us to get to the bottom of that a little bit more. Purple player has now been vanquished. I am guessing we must have been in the very center. There's probably one more unicorn glade to the right. Oh, it was day one. I probably could have purchased a few more unicorns if I'd stepped in. We did not. But there it is, folks. Unicorns and unicorns. There's more map to be played. I think we're going to accept these losses. And then we are going to go right into Lancashire. Psych, I'm guessing that they're about to purchase a whole ton of unicorns. They do. Yep. Unicorns it is. And let's fight this fight because this should be the final fight. Avatar said, oh yeah, it was a lucky blind. They did get that good lucky blind off on us. So, always sad when that happens. We're going to steel skin these these phoenixes, and then I don't care what they do. As we finish up this fight, Bearded Man says, something pretty funny would be if unicorns had double the chance to blind Cyclops because they only have one eye. I love that idea. I love those kind of unique hidden mechanic types of things. I think that that's wonderful. So I would love to see that happen. I know it's not keeping with the original, you know, goals and intentions of Heroes of Might and Magic 2, but when modding support becomes completely online, I think that uh, I think that I would love to see somebody do that. Uh, little fun, little fun things like that that make sense would go an awful long way to improve my uh, general appreciation of any playthrough from game to game. Folks, that was 1100 experience. We get three more of these 
skeletons because why not? We might as well have Rialdo gain plus one knowledge and learn diplomacy. And yellow player has been vanquished. Cyclopes are bad enough, Math Obsessed says. I'll drink to that. And folks, that was an excellent playthrough. Um, and I'm thrilled to report that we had a terrible start and I wanted, I wanted to restart after we lost Rebecca on like what, day three, day four, I said, um, I'm gonna take a mole again. I am glad that we persevered because if you can persevere, the greater the struggle, the more glorious the triumph. Folks, thanks everybody for being here. This is, uh, I'm having the time of my life and I appreciate all your good, positive vibes and energy. Um, thrilling, absolutely thrilling. Lord Shadowing is generating those songs now. I'm excited to see what you bring. Uh, Avatar says, GG. Bearded Man says, it's over. Great job, Fix Fox. Thank you so much. Uh, GG to Math Obsessed as well. Good night and all. Chris, Chris, have a wonderful night. Sleep so very good. Lord Shadowing, first try. First try. Avatar said, I said it. Fix Fox is the true hero. Folks, uh, 53 days, score of 235, rating of a black dragon that does not make it into my high scores. We did put Sudden Siege into our high scores, but the, the time to beat, the score to beat, is 251, and so that is not going to make it into our high scores. I'm still grateful for that, and I'm grateful for the time. Folks, look after you. Look after your friends. Look after your family. I'm so excited to see you. Until then, take very good care. Was the sound off this whole time? Pause. Hold on. Was my desktop audio off the whole time? Did you guys not tell me that the sound was off this whole time? No, you guys can hear me. Game sound was off the whole time? No. No, I could have fixed that. Oh, well, sound was good for you, Math Obsessed. Now I just feel sheepish. That's three hours and 40 minutes of your life with no game sound. Hmm. Lord Shadowing says, we don't need no stinking game sound. Your commentary was so good we didn't notice. Game sound was off. Uh, in the future, let me know, folks. These things do happen. Until I see you again, take good care of you, your friends, your family. I love being here, and I'm looking forward to all of you having a great rest of your week. It's been a pleasure. We'll be seeing you around. Thanks.